Hey, this is Andy McCann coming to you from Woodstock, Georgia, here at CrossFit Garage. Sanjoy from Georgia. Hey, local guy. Hey, Sanjoy. He asked, I've got a lot of prepping friends to varying degrees, and one odd commonality is how poor their health is. <laughs> yes, I think actually Jack just talked about this. So um, it's health and fitness. It's just another prep to stack, right? Uh, can it also be that one is none and two is one? So I think what he's saying there is, you know, your health and fitness is doubling up there. Yes, be healthy and fit, but it also could help you in that weird time, right? Anyway, how can I get them to stack the prep of health and fitness? Okay, so <laughs> there's, I guess, two different questions in here, and I like this. Jack, this is probably more up your alley since you're around more of the prepping community than I am, but um, I, I have noticed that too. Typically, when we do a thing and we go out and see people, it's... Um, they have prepped maybe the easier thing, which is, hey, I used my money to buy something. And you're like, great, but what about your health and fitness? And they're like, well, I did a first step. So I think there's a there's a thing where people don't want to tackle all the projects and maybe they just want to scratch some things off and maybe you let some of the harder ones kind of go to the wayside. Like, yeah, one day I'll put in that well. It just takes a lot more time. So the question of is health and fitness a thing where it's one is none and two is one? So I think yes. So do you want to just get out and do fitness? No, probably not. I mean, I do, but I don't know. In this community, I think you can kind of like help them see the idea that it's going to be good for you, even if times are bad or even if they're not, right? So Jack's slogan right there. So what what should they do? I mean, really, anything is better than nothing. And if they were healthy and fit and then something happened, yeah, they would be able to then you know, live a good life and do things, carry stuff, or whatever. So I think a way that I might approach these guys is to ask them questions about um, what they already enjoy doing inside of their prep. So I don't know, let's, let's go with, um, hey guys, uh, let's pretend there's an EMP that does blow up and stuff is knocked out and you want to get out of Dodge or there's a hurricane or whatever, some sort of scenario where you're like, hey, it's time to bug out. Yeah, what do you have in your bug out bag? And they start listing the things in their bug out bag. And just roll with me here. I'm making this stuff up. But let's just say he's like, uh, I got a .30-06. I got a 9 millimeter. I have several cases of ammo for both of those. Then I've got, and he starts listing all these things out. And you're like, hey, that's awesome. Let's look at what the average backpacker's um, uh, pack weighs uh, for someone that's doing the Appalachian Trail. So you go and look, look that up. It's probably going to be between 30 and 50 pounds, somewhere in that range. I really don't know, but I imagine it's in that range. So somebody simply out on the trail trying to live for a couple of days between towns is carrying around a 30-pound pack. Actually, let me pause and go look. All right, so I threw in the search there. It says, what's the average weight of an Appalachian Trail backpack? And it says about 25 to 30 pounds. So that was pretty close. So somewhere, let's, let's call it 25 pounds. So already they're hiking a pack that has 25 pounds worth of gear in it. Then they're throwing in a rifle, a gun, and some ammo, and some MREs, and I don't know, whatever else. So you're probably looking at a backpack that's like 50 pounds. Okay, so then you say, hey, Timmy, you said you got this in your backpack. What do you think that weighs? They're like, yeah, it's probably weighing about 50 pounds or something like that. I'm like, okay, well, when's the last time you put 50 pounds on your pack, on your back and walked it around? They're like, well, maybe never. Like, what do you think would give out first, like in your, in your preps on this uh, escape, this bug out? And they're like, well, I don't know, the backpack straps. Like, do, so you think the backpack straps would give out before your shoes? Um, what's connected to your shoes? Oh, how about your feet? Do you think your feet are going to be able to take all that like pounding? And are you in the mountains or are you on a road? And, and so basically you can get them thinking about this and help them understand and maybe see that the thing that's lacking in their prep for a bug out scenario where they got to walk is actually probably them. I think another way you can do this is show them what you're doing. So as an example, I'll, I'll post some uh, 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 videos or whatever of me doing a thing at our gym and um, put it on, I guess, Instagram and Facebook are all linked. And so you put it on one and it goes to the other. And my peers who are all about 50 get to see that and say, hey, wow, there's a 50 year old dude that can do some things that, you know, most 50 year old guys can't do. And so maybe through action, I can motivate them, say, hey, look at me, even I can do this. It just takes one step at a time. I, I think the thing that doesn't work is especially with the proximity bias in play is when you just simply tell them, Hey, you're fat and, and sluggish and not very fit. You should do something. I don't know if that really works. Uh, especially if they're family, nobody really likes to listen to family. I guess you could aim them at one of my podcasts. Let's go into, uh, uh, it's called CrossFit garage. Uh, actually, I think I just changed the name recently so I could try and find, start finding a better name. They go look what I changed it to. 
Oh, so I made it even more unique. It's CF for CrossFit. So CF Garage with Andy McCann. Yeah, how unique is that? I'll come up with something better one day. But you can go there and look through those podcasts. I do actually have a couple on diet and nutrition and you know eating better. And of course, you guys know my mindset. I'm slanted towards preps as well. I like the idea of being prepared. I just think this is a good way to do it. So yeah, I don't think I would like hammer into somebody. I don't think that's ever going to go well. And I'd especially lean away from telling family what to do. Instead, I would probably lean on stories and anecdotes and maybe taking them down the the trail, pun intended, of, hey, what does it look like when you bug out with, with your preps and see if they can sort of make that connection. So I know Jack has a hard line and I love it. I just, I don't know. I have a hard time taking a hard line when he's like, hey, you guys are fat and you need to fix it. <laughs> I love it, but I don't know. I'm just not there yet. I'd like to walk people through this. Um, anyway. If you need specific help with anybody, let me know. I'm happy to help you address that. Uh, You can find me, um, Andy, at CrossFitGarage.com, or you can get to any of our podcasts. I already gave you that name. It's CF Garage with Andy McCann, and we talk about food, fitness, and finance. Of course, you can go on YouTube, at Andy McCann 42. Guys, stay healthy, stay strong, and remember, you're going to have to carry that backpack. Jack, what do you think?